Hi everyone and welcome to the final closing video of this chapter. It was a pretty long way to get here, but I really hope you were following and you were learning a lot. And in this video, I want to talk about creating the exterior environment for our interior scene. So you may be wondering why would we need an exterior uh, environment for an interior scene? And the answer is pretty straightforward because, well, we need something to be visible behind the windows, especially uh, big window surfaces as we have in our scene. And most common technique for solving that problem is simply using a background images that would imitate the environment. But I personally, as long as it's possible, as long as I'm not limited by hardware, by memory and so on, I really prefer using the actual 3D models and yeah, I, I would say the biggest benefit of that is simply it produces more predictable results because you have a control over every single aspect of the background. So for example, if I really want to, I can move this building the way well I prefer. I can change the three layouts here. I can move them around. I can layer the objects on as many levels as I want to. So for example, when I have a camera like this, when I'm panning it around, you can see certain elements of the background move slower or faster. And that's because I'm using multi layers of, of those elements. This could be obviously done with uh, 2D images as well. We could just put them one behind another, but changing their colors, for example, changing uh, their look, changing their sizes. This becomes, I think this is simply much more limited to what we can do with 3D models, like in my example. Second reason for using 3D models is their scalability. So for example, if I really want to render this picture in, let's say 500% of resolution, the background elements will always scale. So the resolution on those elements, except of textures maybe, will always follow the resolution of the rendering. So I won't get blurry windows or blurry details on the trees as it would probably happen with 2D images. And in case you want to avoid uh, blurred texture or blurred background images, you would really need to use a high resolution pictures which also consumes quite a lot of uh, computer memory. And I think 3D models are in the end kind of way more optimized because even those very detailed elements like rooftops, for example, can be created by meshes, which are not that heavy, not that complicated. And in the end, even consuming less memory than high resolution pictures you would need to use. Third reason is the fact that finding a good quality background pictures of the set you're actually working on at the moment is usually very hard or even impossible as long as you didn't make those pictures yourself, those pictures, panoramas, backgrounds. It's actually quite problematic to even shoot them at the location because you have to, well, somehow squeeze yourself between the building and the background, uh, kind of try to omit the possible vegetation that could block your view as we have here. And with 3D models, you can actually rebuild the entire background the way you want to. It probably won't be photorealistic as in the picture, but you can always mark the picture elements with some basic models. So as you can see here, I, I'm just using some fence 3D model from one of the projects. So it mimics the fence we have here. I've also put some uh, 3D trees. Actually, it's just a one model. Again, it's used as an instance to save a memory and the buildings in the background. Well, they don't look the same as this one, but kind of the same. So the general impression this background makes is actually pretty similar to what we have in the original camera matched picture. 
There are obviously some benefits to using static background images. Um, for example, when you have a very small openings like the one here, you could obviously put something in the back. But still, I would say adding at least a small element of 3D environment like this vegetation here to cover the obvious picture that's added to the rendering would look much more realistic than simply uh, sticking a, you know, a 2D image into the background. And in the end, you never know if you won't be producing an animation from that scene. Um, with a camera motion added, even a small opening like that will look very, very artificial uh, with the most simple motion like the one I'm doing here right now in the viewport. So you can see with 3D element added, there is this level of depth. So we really get a feeling that this model is present within the scene and with the static background, this kind of feel really disappears. And if you add a rotary motion like this one, this becomes much, much more obvious because you would either have to move the background plane together with the camera or have a very stretched pan panorama. Uh, I, I don't really recommend using uh, static 2D backgrounds for very exterior exposed uh, camera shots from the interior. So these are the, the reasons, the main reasons I personally prefer creating the, the 3D background as a 3D model, as long as your hardware allows you doing that. But this scene was rendered on eight gigabyte memory card. Uh, it uses, I think, four gigabytes of RAM maximum. We will get to that in the upcoming chapter, uh, to which I really invite you. So thank you very much for sticking out with me for all those videos from this chapter. And yeah, let's continue working on the scene where we'll be adding the lights, the materials, the basic illumination and seeing how it goes from that point onward. Thank you for watching again and see you in the upcoming video. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofur store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.